Greetings, Minecrafters. Non-Sanity here, and welcome to part three of what's become a short series of Applied Energistics 2 tutorials on channels and storage. And today I'm going to look at storage cells and what they contain and how much they can contain. So what I've got here is a creative energy cell, a ME chest, and an interface connected to this transfer node, which when you would put it on top of cobble between lava and water and give it at least one world interaction upgrades, and I've given it a bunch, it will create cobble. With this many, it's actually creating 192 cobble at a time. That's three stacks worth. That gets sent into this interface, which then puts it into this uh, chest, which can c carry one storage cell. And this is the smallest size 1K storage cell. And as you can see here, it says it can carry 1,024 bytes and 63 types. Of course, only one type is being used, cobble. But what do those bytes mean? Well, what you want to do to calculate is multiply that by 8, and then subtract a little bit, depending on how many types you've got. And we'll come to that in a bit. For now, in this 1K cell, for only one type, we only have to subtract 64. So 1,024 times 8 minus 64 gives us 8,128. So that's how much a 1K can store. All right. What about if it's something more complicated than cobble? So what I've got here in this chest is an infi miner, which is a rather, um, this must be a creative only object. I've never seen it in the game. It is obscene in its stats. As you can see, it's got a lot of information attached to it. Look at that attack damage down at the bottom. Yeah, this is a very complicated item with lots of information on it. So if we send lots of those into the system, and we have the same 1K storage drive that can hold 1,024 bytes, only one type, how many of those can it hold? Well, it turns out exactly the same number. 8,128, which I can't bring up there, but you can see it there if your screen is clear enough. 8,128, same number as the cobble. All right, well, maybe an, an object that's that simple, well, that, that complicated, but it really isn't that complicated. Let's go to something really complicated. There are cardboard boxes added by mechanism which you can place on an item. I've got an extra one. I'm in creative. What I'm putting it on here is a chest. And inside that chest is a whole bunch of random items. Uh, very random is because I had them stored in one of these prefab lists. And uh, we upgraded, updated the mod pack. So uh, all the IDs changed. And I got a completely random set of items. <laughs> But put all those into the cardboard box, break it when not in creative mode, and you can pick it up, and then you can put it in here into this creative strong box, which you can take out as many as you want. It'll keep filling itself back up. But these are con these contain, as you can say, block data, yes, because the cardboard box has something in it, and it has a chest in it, and that chest has all that same stuff. So that's a very complicated object. Again, 1K storage cell, 1,024 bytes. How many? Same number. Again, you can't see it there, but it's 8,128, same amount. All right, so it doesn't matter what you put in. But then what if you put in two different things? So here I've got a chest with dirt, and here a chest with cobble. Since it doesn't matter how complicated it is, but how, how about if we have two? So I hook these up to a little bit of redstone to start them pumping in at the same time. So we should have an equal amount in the same 1K storage drive. And how many do we have? 4,032 and 4,032, that's 8,064. That's less than the 8,128 you would normally have. Well, how much is it less by? Well, it turns out it's less by 64, because each type takes up 64 slots that would normally be applied to storage. So by adding an extra item, you lose 64 blocks, 64 items worth of storage, just to hold the information that the second thing is dirt. 
This is going to repeat itself for each item you add. Uh, I, over here I did a test with lots of items, 63 different types, so this drive has 1024 full, but it also has 63 types full. I did that using uh, scrap boxes from Industrial Craft and uh, just dumping a bunch of other ores or uh, blocks and wool into the system. So there's 63 types, and if you add all these up and then add 64 for each type, it comes out to 1024 times 8. So it all comes out the same. So for each item, reduces your max capacity by 64. For each type, reduce your maximum capacity by 64, including the first one. Otherwise, the amount you can store is 1024, the number of bytes, times 8. It's a very simple formula, really. <clears throat> now, what about larger drives? Here we have a 4K. It can do four times as many, it has four times as many bytes. Well, it turns out it can store four times as many objects. But the so the amount you take away for each type is no longer 64. It's actually 4 times 64. All right. This is going to work its way all the way up the line. Here we have a 16K, which has 16,384 bytes. Multiply that by that by 8. That's how many items you can store. But for each item, you take the size of the drive, in this case 16, multiply that by 64, and that's how much you take away from your storage for each additional type. And again, and of course, for the 64K, exactly the same thing. It can hold 520,192 cobble. That's not bad. So I was starting to wonder. If you remember from my last video, I had the giant Borg cube of storage. What would that be like if it was really filled with cobble. Those were all empty drives. So what if that was filled by cobble? I said, all right, well, I could rebuild it. I lost the original file, but I can rebuild it. But no, I want to go bigger. Yes, I want to go bigger than the giant Borg cube of storage. So I can't back up anymore. There's something behind me. That's right, it's a drive filled with 64K storage cells. All of them, as you can see, are completely filled with cobble, in this case. And so are its neighbors to either side, and their neighbors, and their neighbors, and their neighbors, and their neighbors, and their neighbors. Welcome to the wall. <laughs> this is the wall of storage, and every single drive is full of cells that are full of cobblestone. Your This, my friends, is what 80 billion cobble is looks like when it's stored in Applied Energistics 2. 80 billion cobble. Just shy of 80 billion cobble. It's 79.9 billion. But let's just call it 80 billion between friends. Why not? That's 80 billion cobble stored in drives. And beyond that, just like the uh, board cube, this is all on a single network. No sub-networks. This is all attached to one network. I just love how big it is. <laughs> Shall we see how it works? As you can see, these are all red because they are powered up and they are connected to the network. Not every one of these is connected to the network currently. They're all ready and wired up and ready to go, but they're not. And I'll explain why in a moment here. Let's slip behind the scenes. A little bit of a Pistronic store there. And there is the brain. This is my Mega Cube. This has a little bit more in the way of faces than a typical Applied Energistic 7x7 cube. It's not maxed out still. This could be rearranged and get maybe five or six more uh, faces per side. So maybe like 30 more, 36 more channels, or 36 more tunnels each with 32 more channels. So it's actually quite a bit that you can cram on. But this one, this layout comes out pretty even. As you can see, I've got three colors per, per side. You can see red, blue, and yellow here. 
the red gets a full 32 channels of tunnels. Remember, each one of these tunnels is sucking 32 channels, 32 channels off of one of these faces of the uh, ME controller, compressing it down and adding it into this blue network, in this case. And this blue network can hold 32 tunnels. So each of those 32 tunnels is 32 channels. So you have the red, 32, the blue, 32, and the yellow is half. There's 16. So it wraps around to another side and gets another half, and where there's a full 32 red and 30, full 32 of blue as well. So each face has two and a half dense cables worth of P2P channels coming off of it. That means when you put it all together up here, we've got 15 channels on these black and white cables, these grayscale cables. There's 15 of them coming, coming off. And those are spreading out and connecting to the back side of all these drives. Hey, it looks like I make a little smiley face, doesn't it? <laughs> so each one of these colored dense cables, like this blue one on the back. You can see up here it's full 32 or 32 channels before it touches the upper controller. And then one of these cables coming out can be designated for that blue, like the one that goes over here. And then that H shape of blue cables connected to this entire square between the uh, white corners, the white blocks are in the corners, that entire square is controlled by that blue cable right there. And all of those drives are going through this piece right here. Because it branches out and connects us to all these tunnels, and each of those tunnels has got 32 drives going through it. Now that's only true if you've come up to it with one of these guys and crouch right-clicked on it to save the settings, and then run over to one of these guys and right-clicked it. So right now this one was not connected to the network and all of its drives were dark. But now if we pop through the wall, it still looks dark, but in a short moment it will turn red. There's so much stuff on this network and it takes a while before it notices that things have changed. Yep, there it is. It's gone red. <laughs> So that means all those drives are now online. So let's slip back through the wall and patch up the hole. So to get all of these drives online, I would have to go around to every one of these tunnels. One, two, three, four, five, you know, just everywhere. And pair them uniquely to just one of these tunnels on here. Each one of them goes to one, of, a different one of these. So basically all of these have to be right-clicked once. And you can see that this is a little pocket in there. There's five of them in that little space. So that goes to five of those tunnels up there. It would take me a long time to do that, and I have not done that. I've done only the ones you saw that were red on the front. Uh, I can find no way to automate doing that cleanly. So I haven't done it. But it could be done. It's all there. It's all wired up. It's all color-coded and ready to go. Now, as you can see here, we've got just shy of 3 billion cobble online just from what I've got activated, which is just a fraction of it. And if you got it all online, it would be 80 billion. That's just astounding. But what I want to do now is show you how to make that denser cube. So let's go over here into the middle of the air, pop down a uh, angel block so we don't have to start on the ground, and start laying out the design. Now, this one is made in two layers, like so. This is a 5x5 five five square. You think, oh, it's bigger than 5x5, five five. it's 7x7, seven seven, right? Yeah, well, it, it is, but it needs this smaller square on the inside. 
and these corners have to go. Now there are several different layouts, and I'm going to show you one that's slightly different from what I'm using, but it does give you those extra channels. So if I'm actually going to do that, I do need I, I can keep these in. But I think I'm going to need a connection like this. I think that's what I want. All right. And now we can put on the outer shell. There we go. This is the 7x7. Seven seven. This is as big as it can get on the outside. And I'm deliberately doing this when it's not powered, just so that it's easier to see without the uh, psychedelic glare, which is very pretty. I like it. But it can be a little bit hard to see what's going on when it's flashing the uh, rainbow at you. All right, almost done with the outer shell here. Just a couple more verticals. Oops. All right. And now where these gaps are, we're going to put cross beams. On all four sides and top and bottom. I mean, anything you're going to do, you want to do it symmetrical just because it makes it easier to work with later on. And besides, if you find a design that works, stick with it. Now these have a bar across the middle. Okay, so I do need to change. Do I? No, I guess that's okay. Yes, I do need to change it. Uh, where did that connect to? Here? No. Here and there? I'll figure that out in a minute. I'll leave it empty for now. And then the bottom. There, there. Let's pop inside and let's get an energy cube. And I can't just stick that here. That'll make the whole thing red. Because it's counting as, for some reason, it counts as one of the blocks in the structure. But if I put it here, and no, it doesn't like that. Like that. There we go. That was the trick. Now I can come down here and seal this one off. All right. There it is. Now, the only difference between this and what I have over there is the middle layer, you take out the corners of the squares. And instead, you put three pieces like that and then two pieces like that. And that is what I'm doing over there. And that gets you, I mean, putting these two pieces in here doesn't make any difference to the number of faces. I think it's 17 in that gap. And you do it like this, and counting these two outer faces, it's still 17. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, versus 4, and 4 is 8, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, yes. So that doesn't matter. You can do whichever one you like. I like this, just because, but either way. But yeah, here we have 5 and 5, 10, so 13. But if we open it up and plug in these corners, you get that same 17 again. So you that's where you get those extra faces if by changing it a little bit. And you can keep those or not, but, you know, up to you. This design is very symmetrical and... At the moment, it's the best design I've seen for the number of faces. And the nice thing is, you can, if you use a Tesseract for power, you can put that on the inside with an energy acceptor. Actually, I think the Tesseract by itself will uh, power it. Your mile, mileage may vary. But then you just have to uh, slap it full of uh, P2P tunnels and start wiring it up. And I like using the colored cables and anchors. So in there is like five. 
and then six, seven, eight on the outside. And then once you've got a group of eight, you put anchors all around it to keep it separate. And then you get four of those groups of eight of the same color. So let's, let's do it a little bit here. Actually, if I want to do it here, I'm going to put it back like that, just because it makes it a little bit easier to do the layout. So there's five on the inside, six, seven, eight. So now you can hook these all up together. And then, to, whoop, I fell. And you put uh, anchors around so it won't connect to any of the other cables. And you can do the same thing again here. See, now they're not, they're not touching each other. But once you get enough of those together, you can switch to the dense cable and start connecting them that way. And then once you get four of them on a dense cable, that dense cable will be completely full. And you want to run it, in my case, up on top where I had a second set of ME controllers for the network. And that's not going to like that because somewhere... I forgot to put tunnels on. Yep. <laughs> tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. Switch back to uh, smart cable size. There we go. Now I can put this on. And to uh, get power to it, you just have to attach it to something that uh, either provides its own power or attach it through uh, a... Um, quartz fiber cable to the rest and somewhere on mine I think it was I had the power on the outside of mine there it is there's the quartz fiber that this this thing is directly touching the cube so the cube has power but the network is only touching the cube through the faces of the P2P tunnels which don't pass power so for the, all these cables and this controller up here to have power it's all coming through that piece of quartz fiber. So that is the wall of storage. Oops. Backed into it. It was a lot of fun to make. I will be putting up a behind the scenes that shows a little bit about how I made it. I will tell you one thing. I did not fill it build all these drives by hand fill them full of cells by hand and then hook it up to a cobble generator i tell you not <laughs> so there it is i went bigger i just don't think i can get significantly bigger at this point i think that that is it that is the maximum nearly the maximum for Applied Energistics 2 on a single network. Of course, you do the uh, interface storage bus trick. You could uh, chain a bunch of these together if you wanted. <laughs> but uh, this is it for a single network. Uh, it is amazing. I love it. All right. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this, do what you do for videos you like. If you think it's cool share it with your friends twitter it whatever that's the the best thing and check out my let's plays i've got uh, a mod sauce one that's been on hold for a little bit but it will be returning and a resonant rise three and i share all the little tips and tricks and and gizmos i come up with to automate things so i'll see you there and i'll see you next time i do a tutorial and if you have any ideas Put them in the comments. I always read the comments. I love comments. Give me more comments. <laughs> this is Don Sandy signing out. Take care. Be good. And I'll see you next time. Oh, uh, before I go, I just want to say, don't do this. There's no reason to do this. I've done it for you. You don't have to. N uh, 80 billion cobble? You can store that in this many deep storage drives, and that's a little simpler. <laughs>